Now the other thing that you know, I have up here is small mouth versus large mouth. And, and you could add spots, spotted bass into the small mouth side if you want. And really the only thing we're talking about with deep cranking on those two different kind of topics is one thing, it's how those fish relate to structure. That's it. So a lot of times, anytime I'm cranking large mouths, I want bottom contact all the way back to the boat or a deflection. I want something hitting into something. Always with a large mouth. With a small mouth, it's a little different approach. A lot of times, especially on uh, uh, lakes that have both, those small mouths are living in a different place than those large mouths. So you might be going down a bank, eight, 10 feet of water, digging a crankbait in 10 feet of water catching large mouths, but you might go to that same bank and sit in, you know, 25 or 30 feet out away from the bank and start casting to it where you come down that contour and then you come across open water. That's when you'll start catching those small mouths. They're just relating to the bank different, period. And the spots are similar to that. They'll, they'll probably be more on that open water stuff. So that's what you really want to know. Um, deep crank in between those two is just really uh, where those fish are relating. Okay? What I think it is, it's just that confidence. Okay, you go, all right, here's old favorite. Here he is. Man, I'm going to catch him now. And that's exactly how you fish that bait. You fish it like, I know I'm going to catch a bass every time that bait moves. And you fish it that way. You have that much confidence in it. And that's why you catch those fish. So that's what you try to create with these baits. You want to have that confidence. One reason I, you know, my wife uh, a few years ago wanted to move from Arizona, and I, I love Arizona. She goes, I want to move. I'm like, all right, we'll move. But we're going to move somewhere I'm living on a lake. I can walk out my door, get on my dock, and go fishing every day, that's where we're going to live. And we do, okay? And why did I want that? Because I wanted to develop that kind of confidence in every technique I threw. So now, let's say, you know, a few years ago, the Ned Rig came out. And, you know, I just put a bunch of Ned Rigs in my boat, and I went fishing for three days. And I, I developed confidence on that technique. And that's what I want guys like you guys to do on these baits is you got to develop these confidence in these baits. You have to fish them like you know you're going to catch them on it. And that's how you're going to be successful. Now when I first started, I mean I'm eight years old, my dad and I troll around the lakes and we troll bomber hellbenders around Bartlett Lake in Arizona for days. And the only time we ever catch one is when we actually hit something like an underwater island we catch a bass. Well, we didn't have depth finders. We didn't have any of that stuff. We just knew when we were over here, we'd hit an island, we'd catch a bass. Well, it's the same way now when you're fishing crankbaits. 90% of your deep cranking is when you deflect, when you dig into something. Hit something down there. Do something. Stop it. You know, something changes that retrieve. That's when you're going to catch most of your bass. And that's the hardest thing about a crankbait is really figuring that out on a day because it's, it's, it's more than likely going to be an accident when you figure it out. You're going to get a back, you're going to, you know, be reeling in and get a loop or something, or something distracts you and you stop that crankbait, and then you catch one, that's what's going to happen. Or the biggest one is you snag on the bottom of the lake. You give it one of the hero pulls, and it pops off and you catch one. To me, that's, you better have some major deflection going out there. You better get into what I call the skeet reese cranking theory on, on the lakes. Uh, when Skeet won a bunch of tournaments on Gunnersville years ago, the reason he won those tournaments is he's using a 7 to 1 reel and he was taking a, you know, like a 6XD or a, a, a Normark, uh, the, the wrap, you know, like the, any of the wraps, the deep, deep wraps, and burning them across the bottom lake. I mean, as fast as you could reel them. And it just hurt your hands. I mean, you could do it for 20 minutes. I could do it 20 minutes. I couldn't do it for two or three hours straight. And that's how a lot of tournaments were won on the Tennessee Valley Lakes, is you had to, I mean, hurt yourself doing it. You get an eight, to eight retrieve reel and go pretty quick, and it's just about the speed of the bait coming across. It's Mike Iaconelli. This is Bash U TV. Here's what's awesome about Bash U TV. You get the top instructors. You will learn things at Bash U that you will learn nowhere else. We take the mystery and the myths 
out of bass fishing. Real tools that help you catch more fish consistently. At Bass U TV, shoes are optional. And I like turtles. And that's why you want to check out Bass U TV. Join the Bass U family. Welcome to Bass U TV.